Enigma. It's the greatest encryption device in history, and the Germans use it for all major communications. Of course, that's what you're working on. Everyone thinks Enigma is unbreakable. Good. Let me try, and we'll know for sure, won't we? I think the main thing that drew me to this film is that I wanted to make a movie that celebrates being different. Alan Turing is sort of like the outsider's outsider. He wasn't burdened by normality. His mind was able to soar free. I mean, he could look at the world from a different point of view and come up with these brilliant, smart ideas that nobody ever thought about. I'm designing a machine that will allow us to break every message, every day, instantly. Immediately when I read the script, I wanted Benedict to play Alan Turing. Alan Turing is such a complex character. He has so many layers. You have this very driven, almost arrogant man. Careful with you. Um, it's not a toy. You have this man who's so awkward in social interactions. Jack, good. We Where's Miss Clark? And at the core of it is this boy who has lost so much. Lovely, isn't he? You could just see it when the camera turns on. His whole body language changed how he sits, how he behaves, how he moves. It's like he transformed into this man. Action. I got on with Morton really, really well. He's got a very, very strong idea of storytelling. I mean, he's great at holding the narrative of the film and contextualizing any given moment. I mean, I like an actor who demands a lot from a director. He demands a lot from himself, and we're both pushing each other and really exploring it and trying to find out what this scene is about and how to get that performance. The cast, the script are amazing, and also the great talent of Morton, making this film feel like we are part of it. You know that great directors, I've learned, have a great sense of rhythm. It's like a symphony. There's a musicality in this film that, that's very rare. But there's also his eye, and his eye is beautiful. There's not one shot which is not gorgeous. The production design is beautiful. The way the machine is built is beautiful. And that's why when I saw Imitation Game, I was stunned, because I was moved by what was on screen. Yeah. This is a movie yeah. with a small budget. Uh, the good part is that it gave us a lot of freedom. This is a passion project. It gave me as a filmmaker the freedom to do what I wanted. Uh, the big challenge was, of course, how to give it the scale to remind people about the war. He's a true collaborator. He just has this instinct about when to step in and say something and when to back off and give me, give me creative freedom. And he was wonderful to work with that way. Closer to the game, not so much online. What was lovely about Morton, I'm very, very decisive, and I know straight away if I like something or not. And luckily, Morton was exactly the same. He has an energy that is infectious. You know, the atmosphere on a set is largely down to the director. His enthusiasm is limitless. He's so excited. He comes to set every day, like, full of ideas, and, and can't almost get them out as quick as his brain's working. And he's got, you know, I don't think he'd be insulted if I said he's got a touch of the choring about him. Action. He gives a sort of energy and thrill to this environment, which it should be. That it's not a sort of you know, period drama with a bit of dust on it, that it's going to invigorate people because of the pacing of the story and what happens when they crack the Enigma code. You need someone inspirational as your director. You need someone confident in their vision, uh, but at the same time collaborative in their process. And Morton was a great fit. We always fear what is different. Different political views, race, sexuality. I mean, prejudice is one of our biggest problems today. And because of this man not being normal, he was able to achieve all of these staggering things. So I think it's a very important story to tell.